Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our class in Technology for Teaching and Learning 1. For today's lesson, we are going to talk about the safety issues on the use of ICT, including the e-safety rules. Now, for this topic, we hope to achieve the following learning objectives. By the end of the lesson, students are expected to have identified and explained safety issues on the use of ICT and listed and applied e-safety rules in the use of ICT. Now, these are the topics that we will cover for this lesson. The first one is the risk in the use of ICT and e-networking. Now, Technology is a phenomenon that seems to be uncontrollable and despite so many benefits it brings to the teaching and learning process, there are also negative effects or influence on the part of the learners. Hence, as future teachers, we need to be aware of these risks and negative effects so that we will know how to safeguard and, and protect our children in our learning communities especially at schools where they spend most of their waking hours and in our homes and in any facilities that provide them the opportunity to access and use digital technologies such as the internet cafes because safeguarding and protecting our children and our learners should be our primary role as teachers as parents and as members of the school community Now, the use of technology is not a risk by itself, but how it is being used will be vulnerable to risk. When improperly used, technology can pose dangers to the users at school and at home. Now, what are these safety issues that needs to be addressed by the safety policy and guidelines? Without further ado, we will now enumerate the risk of using technology and ICT. Number one is exposure to inappropriate content, including online pornography, extremism, such as exposure to violence associated with a racist language. So this is very dangerous, no? so especially on the part of the little kids. No? So as parents and teachers, we need to safeguard our kids so that um, they will not be able to access these kinds of uh, bad um, content. Next is the lifestyle websites like self-harms and suicide sites and hate sites. Hate sites. Next is the very common cyberbullying in all forms and receiving sexually explicit images or messages. Next is the privacy issues including the disclosure of personal information. So take note that whatever you um, put in your social networking profile will be public will be known public and uh, too much information personal information that you are putting in there is not really good a good thing to do because that can be used by um, bad people um, to inflict harm on you and on other people like like um, on my observation, like a lot of people, especially here in the Philippines, are doing this. Like they post everything online um, to keep everyone aware of what's going on around their lives. Like, um, for example, there was even a news that of someone um, who took a picture of her airplane ticket that he's gonna go somewhere. And so, um, the bad people who knew that um, he was all alone living in his house um, 
took that advantage to rob his house since they knew that he was not there and he was not around no so when he came back from his vacation so he found out that his house was robbed and that was because of his post na at the moment or ATM with a picture of him um, holding that ticket, airplane ticket. So those are um, some kind of uh, um, like situations where um, that could pose danger to the part of So disclosing too much of our personal information is not really a good and a smart thing to do, okay? So we should remind our kids, our learners, not to um, put everything, all the personal information in when they are using the social networking sites such as Facebook or Instagram because they might it might be used by some bad people to harm them or to... Um, do some bad things next is the health and well-being um, because of the amount of time spent online and internet gaming and many more so recently there have been a lot of reports that a lot of teenagers are suffering from depression and I do believe that one of the biggest contributing factor for this is that um, teenagers and people nowadays spend most of their time uh, most of their waking hours looking at their phones and checking out what's into the social media you know and that could greatly affect their health and well-being Now, according to research, children who spend most more time social networking online feel less happy with a number of different aspects of their lives, according to the new research by the University of Sheffield last 2017. So I think this um, is still true nowadays, right? Like when you spend most of your time or more time online so you will become less happy with your life because you tend to compare your life your imperfect life to the polished life of other people that they are posting online right so children are less happy the more time they spend on social networks they are less happy about their schoolwork they are less happy about their school they are less happy about their family about their appearance especially when they see that others are posting a perfect picture of themselves on Facebook or on Instagram and the, the person looking at it uh, will say oh my gosh I don't have that perfect body I don't have that perfect face without really knowing that those are just edited um, images of themselves believe in the research findings that uh, people who are posting everything about their lives and updating about everything on their lives on Facebook are not really happy people because if you are happy, you tend not to um, seek for other people's approval. So you just live your life simply and happily. Now, that's just my personal opinion, okay? So another risk in the use of ICT and e-networking is the prolonged exposure to online technologies, particularly at an early age. Now, um, think about your childhood experiences. Right? My childhood experiences was so much fun. We always uh, stayed outdoors most of the time where we played patintero, we like uh, fly kites or uh, nangunguha ng bayabas or kung ano-ano pa, di ba? Bahay-bahayan, patintero. So those were our childhood experiences. But if you will notice, children at present 
Uh, they spend most of their time indoors looking at the television or looking at an iPad or looking at the screen, you know? Without uh, the parents knowing that this could have a negative effect on the part of um, the young children. Actually, um, in my uh, children's pediatrician, um, there's a signage which says that uh, no screen time for children three and below. So meaning, um, children are not as early as one to three years old should not be exposed to any screen time. But if it is unavoidable, so then we should control or limit and not have them watch for the whole day. Okay? So nowadays, more young children know how to play a computer game than riding a bike. However, we do know the brain is highly sensitive to stimuli and spending more time with technology and less time interacting with others could lead to communication deficits. Okay. So there is lack of real interaction replaced by a shiny screen. So I um has also become a common place to respond to child boredom by simply handing them a device whenever they are bored. Children today do not know how to be alone as they are constantly entertained with some type of device. So, okay, so if you will notice class, parang uh, nowadays dumadami na yung mga bata na delayed yung kanilang speech ability because they were exposed uh, heavily to this technology. You know, they spend most of their waking hours looking at uh, these gadgets. And as a result, there is lack of human interaction. So, may mga bata na hindi nakikipag-interact or hindi nakikipag-usap or kahit na mataas na yung edad nila, wala pa silang nalalaman na um, masyadong mga salita because they're always watching videos on YouTube or on their devices. Okay, so now young children even run the risk of becoming technology addicts. And that's a very sad thing. Children as young as four have been receiving psychological treatment for addiction to smartphones and iPhones or iPads and other gadgets. As technology becomes present in our young children's lives, we must carefully assess the detrimental effects it may have on their developing minds and their future. Okay? So the key is uh, to control the amount of time that our children um, look at their iPads or use or look at the television or use these gadgets. No, we do not allow them to use it the whole time, but just control or limit the amount of time they spend on it. Okay? So next is addiction to gambling and gaming. So usong uso di ba? Too sad that our teenagers nowadays are exposed and are addicted to these gaming sites. And it's sad that it's taking a toll on their health and on their lives, no? So, um, some of them forget to sleep. Some of them forget to eat because they they just wanted to play. Like, it's so sad that I know someone who died at the age of 16 because of this gaming addiction. Um, because according to his parents... Um, hindi na siya kumakain ng maayos, hindi na natutulog ng maayos, and nag-collapse na lang siya ng bigla. So that's because of addiction to gaming. So it's so sad, no? So as parents and as teachers, I believe that we can do something to help our kids not to become addicted to this gaming and gambling on the internet. So according to the World Health Organization, on 2020, 
the rise of excessive online gaming is emerging in the Philippines with 2.9 million gamers recorded in the country. The incidence of depression is also increasing in the country in relation to um, this excessive online gaming. So, yeah, like if you spend, like what I said earlier, like if you spend so much of your time, like the whole day, the whole night looking at that screen without human interaction, madidepress ka talaga, right? So next risk is the theft and fraud activities such as phishing. Now what is phishing? Phishing is a fraudulent practice of sending emails purporting to be from reputable companies in order to induce individuals to reveal personal information such as passwords and credit card numbers. So be careful of what you click online, okay? Especially those links because you don't know that those links contain um, or are just uh, just wanted to get your personal information so that they could use it for uh, to steal all all your um, like savings in the bank. So just be careful, especially if you're fond of uh, online uh, purchasing, like or what what do you call that term, like yung bumibili ka online online shopping okay so the um, another risk is the viruses trojan spyware and other malware now malware is a catch all term for various malicious software including viruses adware spyware browser hijacking software and fake security software now, when we say adware, those are, mm, alam mo yung bigla na lang sumusulpot dun sa baba pag na mga ads na hindi mo naman talaga kailangan or hindi mo naman gustong makita. ba? And mind you that everything that you do online is being tracked. You just don't know it. So, like if you are fond of going to porn sites so um, it's called digital footprint so malalaman nila kung ano yung mga sites na palati mong pinupuntahan and so nagsasuggest sila ng mga videos may bigla na lang nagpa-pop up okay so be careful with where you go to on the internet because everything is being spied okay everything is being tracked once installed on your computer, malware or these programs can seriously affect your privacy or your computer security. So, kinukuha nila lahat ng mga na-encode mo doon ng mga passwords. And for example, malware is known for relaying personal information to advertisers and to other third parties without user content. And some programs are also known for containing worms and viruses that cause great deal of computer damage. So they get all your personal information. They could steal your and hijack your Facebook account and everything that you put into your laptop. And uh, they could use it for their fraudulent activities. Now, spyware collects all your personal information and poses it, passes it to the interested third parties without your knowledge and consent. Spyware is also known for installing Trojan viruses. Now, uh, yung bigla ka na lang magugulat kasi may mga numbers na tumatawag na sa yon, nag email na sa yon, kahit na uh, di ba tatanong mo saan sila ng galing or saan nila saan sila kumuha ng number mo so yun sa mga pinaspasukan mo ng mga sites na hindi mo alam na um, may spyware pala and then Trojan horse virus or Trojan is a type of malicious code or software that looks legitimate but can take control of your computer a Trojan is designed to disrupt damage steal or in generally or in general inflict some other harmful action on your data or network okay so how do you protect from these so just be careful of where you go to and what you click to
ออนไลน์โอเคส่วน next is social pressure to maintain online networks via texting and social networking sites so um, I know or there was a news about this girl na umabot yung utang niya ng half million just to keep up with her post on the internet. So, yun, nangungutang siya ng mga outfit para OTD. Um, she goes to the different places kasi marami siyang followers and she feels the pressure, no? Like, naku, baka mawalan ako ng followers nito. So, she travels from one place to another spending money. So, those are, so it has something to do with our mental health as well, right? Okay, so social pressure so um i do believe no that i personally this is just my personal belief na um really happy people are not really that visible and they don't post that much personal information on facebook because they are happy and contented with their lives okay so meanwhile yung on the contrary um those who need the affirmation from other people would constantly post online or, or we call them as posters where in everything they post online okay okay so here's another term slacktivism so you're gonna change the world with an online petition a facebook status update and a couple of retweets You're right. I should probably share a few more links. Like this guy right here is thinking that he is uh, making a change. He is making a difference in the world with the post that he is making. No, this is. Um, you know, kaya parati siya na post ng post ng post because she he feels na. Uh, Now, it's called slacktivism like he's just sitting there but he thinks that he's doing or making a difference in the world by um, posting something online about a certain issue in our community okay. okay so we are done with the first topic and now let us go to the second second topic which is the minor misuse of ICT in schools now these are the minor misuse of ICT made by the learners at school number one is copying information into assignment and failing to acknowledge the source we call it plagiarism and copyright infringement which is punishable okay so if you are to get something online um, when you research something online it is readily available and accessible no, but uh, if you are getting someone else's ideas if you borrow someone else's ideas make sure to acknowledge the author or um, yeah or the writer uh, to avoid uh, plagiarism and copyright infringement okay Next is downloading materials not relevant to their studies. So you just download and download and download everything. So the right thing to do is to decipher which ones are relevant and which ones are credible, uh, reputable sources before you download it. Okay? Do not just download and download and download everything. Next is misconduct associated with a subject logged in such as someone else's password. So using someone else's account, for example, so your classmate uh, uh, went outside para mag CR tapos nakalimutan niya na mag sign out sa kanyang account and dun nag sit down ka at ginamit mo yung account niya. So that is a big no no. Okay. Um, next is leaving a mobile phone turned on during the class period. So that is also a big no-no and a sign of disrespect to your teacher. Now let us go to the third topic, which is the e-safety. Some issues of e-safety. So e-safety helps safeguard children and young people in the digital world. 
eSafety emphasizes learning to understand new technologies in a positive way. eSafety educates children about the risk as well as the benefits so we can feel confident online and eSafety supports young children and adults to develop safer online behaviors both in and outside the school. Now here are the ways on how to be safe and how to have e-safety. So these are the ways to confront all of our um, concerns regarding the use of uh, technology having uh, so uh, these are the things that uh, we need to teach our children to for them to have um, protection while using technology and ICT and in um, safety no number one is stay safe do not give out your personal information to people places you don't know so um, do not post too much about your personal information so your birthday uh, your address so please avoid such thing okay so we've mentioned that earlier next is don't meet up so meeting someone you have only been in touch with online can be dangerous and always check with an adult you trust okay so next is accepting files mm -hmm. accepting emails files pictures or text from people you don't know can cause problems as those files could contain malwares and viruses which could damage your computer and on your privacy next is reliable check the information before you believe it is the person or website telling the truth okay next is tell someone Tell an adult if someone or something makes you feel worried or uncomfortable. So let us follow these smart tips to keep yourself safe online. Okay. So let us remember that e-safety takes care not only of the internet safety, and technologies but also the electronic communication such as the mobile phones game consoles and wireless technology so it highlights the need to educate our children and young people about the benefits and risk and responsibilities in the use of information technology Now let us go to our third topic, which is the network management. So here are the safety um, tips in the use of network in schools when children are at schools. Number one, make clear that no one should log on as another user. Number two, require all users to always log off when they have finished working. Next, maintain equipment to ensure health and safety. Provide students with access to content and resources through guided e-learning. Set up a clear disaster recovery system in place for critical data that includes secure remote backup critical data. Secure wireless network to appropriate standards suitable for educational use. Install all computer equipment professionally and meet health and safety standards. And review the school ICT system regularly with regard to health and safety and security. Now, with regards to the password policy, only, only authorized user will have the individual passwords. Users are not permitted to disclose their passwords unless they got permission from the owner or from the management. The equipment that keeps the personal information shall be locked when unattended to prevent unauthorized access. And computers should be set to a timeout if they become unused for a certain period of time. 
on personal mobile phones and mobile devices, all mobile, mobile phones shall be kept away in a box away from the children or learners and access is only allowed at break time or at the end of the classes or when needed during the class period. For the cameras, taking pictures only from parents or caregivers and not from any other family member or friend while the child attends class. And any picture taken of children shall be on camera solely for the purpose. Now let us go to the, our last topic, which is setting up an educational technology room. Schools that plan to dedicate a room where students can access technologies for learning should include the following safety rules. Provide tables. These tables can be tilted and adjustable to the height of the users. Provide anti-glare screen filters. Provide adjustable chairs. Make sure lighting is suitable. Make sure workstations are spacious and create a work plan at a computer laboratory to maximize its use. Most specifically, safety rules that can reduce the risk of accidents in working stations should also include the following. No trailing wires across or around the room which people can trip on. Electrical sockets should not be overloaded. Electrical equipment should be safety tested at least once a year. There should be an adequate space around desk for people to move. Bags and obstacles should be stored out of the way. Food and drink should not be placed near machines. Heating and ventilation should be suitable for the working environment. Fire extinguishers should be available. And fire exit should be clearly marked and free from clutter. Technology is an effective tool that can make education more meaningful and engaging for the teachers and students alike. We need technology in every classroom and in every student and teacher's hand because it is the pen and paper of our time, and it is the lens through which we experience much of our world. That is according to David Warlick. Now, what questions do you have regarding the topic? You could comment it down below. So that ends our topic for this morning. I hope you learned something from our lesson for today. God bless everyone and goodbye.